Hello everybody and welcome back to Pokemon's Haxious Battles where viewers like you show us your Haxious Battles. Today we have a video brought to you by Carbonific. I titled it Impeccable Quick Climb. Guys, in order to be true appreciators of fantastic hacks, you need to see all different kinds of hacks. And one of them is just the type of hacks where shit happens at just the wrong time. Any other time, it would be perfectly cool. I mean, as cool as hacks can get, but, you know, sometimes it's like, well, I didn't need that play rough miss. Well, sometimes you do need it. And this is right when it happens. So I'm going to show you guys some of the worst quick clawing action in a double battle I have seen. Um, instead of it being just sheer, sheer, sheer number of hacks, you're going to see it's all about that timing. So we start off the battle. Carbonific, I assume, is on the side with Kangaskhan and Rotom Heat against Garchomp's Miracle. You know, nobody likes to face down Smeargle. Fake out right to the face. Great, great, great. That thing's almost dead. Fuck that thing. Ugh. It flinched. Um, now we are playing against clearly a Brick Break Garchomp, so that says something. Very, very non-meta. Very interesting. We'll see this Will-O-Wisp go up on the Garchomp. And uh, it will be burned, so good good turn, good first turn, strong first turn. Guys, did you see that? Have you seen that Quick Claw activate? Why is there a Quick Claw on that Smeargle? Why? Why? For reasons like this. Switches out Rotom Heat, and instead of Kangaskhan outspeeding and destroying the Smeargle's face, good night, and good night on the switch in, which means... Amoongus hasn't even spent one turn of sleep yet. Kangaskhan will spend his mandatory turn of sleep right now. And get Brick Broke to the face by a Burn Garchomp once again. Here comes the Burn Damage. And guys, pay very, very close attention to that Burn Damage on Garchomp. Because this Garchomp will literally die to that Burn without being touched. Yes, without being touched. Sticky Web goes up. Also, relatively not meta. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Another brick break right into Garchomp. He does take a little bit of rough skin. Woo, success. Good damage, strong damage. And yet Amoongus, yes, still asleep. Thank you, Amoongus, thank you. Now Garchomp, everybody, is clearly faster than Smeargle. Clearly faster. He comes with a protect. Might as well waste a turn away for your Amoongus to wake up, right? I don't know why Smeargle's still going for the Dark Void. Maybe he thought, you know, he'd go for... Dragon Claw on the other Garchomp, but that's not going to happen. Protect saves him this turn from the other Dragon Claw. I don't know, I didn't actually see it. Well, I know we tried to break, break again. Who knows? Quick Claw activates, guys. Did we see this? Did we see this? As Amoongus switches out, welcome Rotom to being asleep without even having spent a turn on the field. So he just sends him out here. Rotom, go! Fall asleep. Outspeeds this Garchomp. Sends him immediately to sleep. So he can't kill the Smeargle. So now I think all four of Carbonific's Pokemon are currently sleeping. Even though two of his Pokemon are faster than Smeargle. He takes the Dragon Claw to the face. Even though it's burned, still has a lot of damage. Rough Skin will activate. Like I said, this Garchomp is not going to get attacked until it goes down to this burn. Which is absolutely ridiculous. Carbonific retreats his Garchomp. Doesn't want to die to that Dragon Claw. Sends out Amoongus. You know, it's got Regenerator. It's kind of like a sponge. Oh man, slow lowers its speed to do that sticky web. That's scary. Smeargo goes sword dance. This is getting nuts, right? Everything's just asleep. What are you gonna do? More dragon claw to the face on a Moongus. Literally, nothing is waking up. His sleep counters are all over the place on all of his Pokemon. Nobody can keep track of them. Kind of just gotta hope for a miracle. At least he's ahead in Pokemon, guys. At least he's ahead in Pokemon. Thanks to that burn damage and that two rough skin, what has it been like five, six turns uh, into the game? Smeargle, Quick Claw, as Amoongus leaves out, you know. Okay, guys, what's the percentage on Quick Claw anyway? What is that? It's like one out of 12, one out of 16? Like, come on. What the hell? He goes for Quick Claw Swords Dance, OP as fuck, with a Hound Doom on the field. Hound Doom goes for a nasty plot. Oh, God. Oh god, let me just tell you, there is nothing scarier than a nasty plot Hondu. No, not even a fully power-up punched 
Kangaskhan. Nope. Nasty Plot Houndoom. Scariest mofo ever. Look at his Dark Pulse damage. Reads that Protect or gets lucky, not sure. One shots this Rotomi. Go away, you are sleeping and you're dead. Thank you for coming. Here comes the Baton Pass. Oh my god. Right into... Ooh! Plus four Kangaskhan. That's just the worst. Uh, Carbon Epic sends out his own very, very hurt Kangaskhan. Sticky Web will slow his own Kangaskhan down. And I do believe once this Kangaskhan goes Mega, I think Carbonifix Kangaskhan wakes up this turn. I think he gets to fake out or something. Yes. One turn. Okay, guys. So, so since the first turn of this game, this is the first time he's gotten to attack. That's good. He got the, he got the flinch. That's awesome. Here comes a flamethrower to the face. I don't care how much you resist, Garchomp. Nasty Plot Hound Doom is going to take your face off. And Life Orb. Oh my god, that thing's got so much power. Amoongus, Kangaskhan, the final two. That Sticky Web's really going to bone that Amoongus because obviously it was going to outspeed everything else anyway. Might as well just stay asleep just for, just for the hell of it. On this turn, Power Punch goes off. We're looking at a plus five Kangaskhan. Like, is that even necessary? And this Flamethrower is going to do it because, like I said, Life Orb... Nasty Bloodhound Doom. Scariest thing ever. So guys, Smeargle in itself, very scary. It's got an 80% chance on each of the targets for Dark Void, so already hitting that many times can like well be considered hacks. Like that should have missed like once. Maybe. You know. Maybe even two. Come on, come on. The fact though that it hit two quick claws right at the perfect time. That's true. That's like true mastery. That is that is just beautiful art. So thank you, Carbonific. I know you got basically bent over this game um, and just fondled, but it was entertaining and I enjoyed watching it. Thank you for sharing. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have a hacks battle of your own, feel free to inbox me. I'll watch them. I watch them all. And you know, I figure at some point we can just take a tally and. You will, will figure out which battle is got the most hacks, and then I will crown that person the king of hacks. As of right now, though, I hope you guys enjoyed Pokemon's Hacksiest Battles, Episode 5, and I hope to see you guys next time.